Hello and welcome to this vSuite version 0.3 video tutorial and in this video tutorial I'm just going to quickly show you how to simulate artificial lighting numerically with the Libby component of the vSuite. Um, so this is where I finished the previous Libby tutorial which showed you how to do analysis of natural lighting. I'm now going to use the same context to show you how to do artificial lighting. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to turn off the display of the old results. And I'm going to create in Blender a lamp, just a standard Blender lamp. Uh, a point lamp will do. And I'm going to position that within my room. So I have already from before a, uh, it started raining on the roof you might hear the rain hitting the roof now I've got this sensing plane which I set up within the last video tutorial and I'm going to keep that as it is because I want that plane to be a, a Libby sensing plane or a lighting sensing plane um, so I'm just going to have this light positioned more or less in the middle of my room and I am going to specify or associate with that blender lamp what's called an IES file. And an IES file are released by luminaire and light manufacturers to describe how much light comes off their lights from different directions. Uh, and these are free to download from manufacturers' websites and so on. So I am going to associate one of these IES files with this blender lamp. And to do that, within the object data panel, which because I have a lamp selected, is this sort of uh, cross icon here. Within that object data panel, I can come down here to this Libby IES file tab, and I can select an IES file to associate with this lamp. So if I do that, opens up a file dialog, and I can pick one of these IES files. I'm going to pick a 100 watt incandescent bulb to associate with that blender lamp. Um, once I've associated an IES file with that lamp, there are some options about whether the dimensions in the file are meters, centimeters, feet, or inches. Generally speaking, it's meters. Um, I can also scale the strength of the light coming off this uh, or represented within this IES file if I want and I can also change the color of the IES file if I wish but I'm just going to keep them as their defaults for the moment. Um, so once I've created a lamp with an IES file associated with it um, I don't really need a sky or I'm not going to use a sky I'm going to pretend it's night time so there's no illuminance coming from the uh, general sky context at all so I'm just going to export that. I'm going to re-export the geometry because the lamp is part of the geometry. So I need to re-export my geometry. Well, once that's done, I can then just press calculate on the Libby simulation node again. And um, it might take a little while because it's because of the way um, Radiance does its calculations, it can find it a little bit difficult to find um, small light sources within the scene. And because we don't have a sky context anymore, giving any brightness to the scene, we only have this lamp, it can take a little while. But that's now done. So as before, once it's done, I can press Radiance Display. And we can now see the coloration on our Libby sensing plane from the IES file associated with this lamp here. And then, so we're getting almost 60 lux right below the lamp, nine lux over here in the corners. Um, we'd probably find that the lux in the corners would go up a bit if we turned up the accuracy and the light was allowed to bounce around the room a little bit more. Um, but all the other options are the same as before. Um, we can do, oops, we can do uh, an extrusion of the results. Uh, we can specify point visualization again so we can see specifically on each point 
of the mesh, sensing mesh, what the value of lux is. Um, I'll just show you quickly if we choose faces as the calculation point, then we get a slightly different visualization option or a slightly different three, dimen three dimensional visualization option when it comes to look at the results. So if we just wait for that calculation to finish, gradients display. Now if I do, we can see that we sort of extrude almost in a bar graph kind of way. The light and velocity. Um, and I think that's, you know, pretty much everything there is to it. Oh, I should also say, um, I can specify artificial lamps within the V-Suite by creating individual blender lamps and associating a file with them, IES file with them. But I can also, if I delete that lamp, I can also instead create uh, a plane. And I can move that towards the ceiling of my building. I can scale that up to cover a larger proportion of the room. And I can subdivide this plane in a similar way that I subdivide uh, results planes. I can subdivide it so that um, at every face of this plane, we can associate an IES file. So this is a quicker way of building up an array of IES files rather than creating a blender lamp for each one and associating an IES file with each blender lamp. So if I just subdivide it twice, I've now got nine faces within this plane. I have to be aware that my normals, and normals are a way in 3D digital work to define in which direction a face is pointing. So if we create a plane and then associate IES files in it, we want our normals to be pointing in the direction that we want the light to be pointing. My normals are currently pointing upwards, so I'm just going to flip those normals and point them downwards. I should also mention, because I forgot to mention it before, for our results planes, so if I just turn off the visualization of those old results, for my results plane, we also need to care, take care about the direction that the normals face, because the normals should face in a direction that we want that plane to sense light. So this was fine for me. I'm, this sensing plane is there to sense light coming from above, and the normals of that plane were pointing upwards, so that's fine. If I wanted to change that to downwards, again, I could either press W and flip normals, or I could even, in object mode, just rotate that plane 180 degrees. So uh, that's just a note about normals and their importance in terms of direction. So we want normals pointing downwards on this plane, which they are. And then in the object data panel of this plane, I also have a Libby IES tab. And in that, I can activate light array, and then I can select the same or a different IES file. So that IES file is now associated with the center of each face of that plane. So if I now, um, we'll keep all the other, other options the same. I've changed the geometry, so I re-click Libby Geometry Export. I don't need to change the context export because I haven't changed the context at all. But if I now press Calculate, we should hopefully see results based on a three by three array of 100 watt incandescent bulbs positioned near the ceiling of our room. So let's see if that does actually happen when it's finished calculating. It might take a little bit longer because we have more lights in the scene now. Right, that's done. 
gradients display and we now get uh, well because these lamps IES lamps aren't spotlights we don't get a very strong uh, peak underneath each lamp we're getting more of a, a general level of illuminance through the whole scene and we can see now that our maximum lux has gone up to 206 from I think it was about 60 before so we can see that yes we have now created an array of lights three by three that are doing a much better job of illuminating the scene much more brightly if I was to have in here um, uh, IES files associated with this plane which had much more directional light than a light bulb for example I might just see if I can see if I've got an IES file like that on my on my system somewhere uh, let's try this one see what happens if I pick this IES file because um, that IES file is associated with geometry I should re-click geometry export and again we'll just run that calculation which again will take a few seconds hopefully not too long right that simulation has now completed and if I press radiance display oh well it probably wasn't worth it in the end because the directionality of these new IES files wasn't quite as strong as I hoped it would be but the upshot of this is that you can create single blender lamps and associate an IES file with them or you can create a plane and then associate an IES file to the plane which will then position that IES light source at the center of each face of that plane so it's just a quicker way, quicker way of building up arrays of lights um, okay I think that's everything I need to say all right thanks for watching